So in this lecture, uh, we'll be looking at the rationale behind thermometers and temperature scales, which we'll be using. Uh, thermodynamics is uh, a subject that has strong empirical foundation, okay, how things are measured and so on. So it's very important to understand this topic. Uh, we'll also revisit this topic again um, um, in certain later lectures. So if you're in the campus, uh, these are COVID times, the thermometer you would be using is something like this, all right? So uh, we will look at this at a later uh, point, but how did, let's first understand how we got here. I mean, not in terms of COVID, but in terms of thermometer. So let's first understand, is there a, a reasonable approach, systematic approach to designing a thermometer? So if you look at uh, when this word thermometer uh, was first used, it was not too long ago, just 400 years ago in 1624 right, by a French uh, man. Uh, so this was defined as an instrument to measure the degree of hotness and coldness. So this idea of degree of hotness and coldness uh, was a common theme. Uh, so, and this thermometer was used for uh, measuring this degree of hotness and coldness. But people have talked about this degree of hotness and coldness for a long time. Uh, Aristotle, uh, who was around 300 BC, uh, uh, what I would call the original Bunsen cell of the Kota factory, uh, he did a lot of theorizing, a lot of talking, but no teaching and talking, but no practicals. Okay, So in one of the, the earliest modern university, University of in it, Italy. It was um, originated in 1088. Okay, so uh, if you look at this, it's uh, six almost 600 uh, years uh, difference. Okay, so I don't know how this university ran their ESO 201 thermodynamics course. Okay, uh, without discussing about thermometer, right? So that's a mystery. Uh, so how do you build a thermometer? Okay, so the way to think about it is identify a material property that changes with temperature in a monotonous manner. What do I mean by monotonous manner? It's either increasing or it's decreasing, all right, with temperature. Uh, so this material property, which you're going to measure uh, can be length with respect to temperature, volume with respect to temperature, uh, but it should be very uh, accessible to measurements. Okay, that's the important thing here. So nail down two special temperatures. Okay, either melting point or let's say boiling point, which we can fix unambiguously. Okay, so so what is melting point? Melting point is not just when you have very cold water or just ice, right? So unless you have coexistence, both the phases of ice and water existing together, that's what determines melting point, right? At melting point, both the phases are together. Uh, same thing with boiling point, right? Coexistence of water and steam, steam without air, right? So water uh, in equilibrium with uh, uh, steam uh, determines the boiling point and so on. Okay. So these are uh, in a way sensitive to ambient pressure and so on. So these special points uh, have become more and more sophisticated in the sense that they are more reproducible, okay? So for example, triple point is more special than any of these two because it's more reproducible, okay? It's, it's not sensitive to pressure and so on. Once you fix the material, you will see uh, when uh, what is the triple point when we uh, discuss more about the phase diagrams. Let's move on. So we said that you fix two uh, temperatures. One is, let's say, zero Kelvin and around 273 in the Kelvin scale or in Celsius scale. You are used to these. These are not very conceptual, how to transform from one scale to another. It's, you can read it from the textbook. Uh, but what is important here is you measure the property. Here, uh, it's a liquid. Uh, let's say it's colored because it's easy to measure. 
and then why do you have a long stem uh, because when the this material liquid when it volumetrically expands if it has a narrow stem long a narrow stem its uh, volumetric expansion can be measured more accurately okay so you typically want it to be a good thermal conductor and so on right it's enclosed and so on so inside a glass uh, tube and it's it's closed okay so uh, uh, other than this uh, you can also use instead of a liquid for example you might have uh, seen a mercury thermometer right that is in my childhood we used a mercury thermometer when uh, we had fever okay so how to put the mercury thermometer under uh, uh, your tongue okay and not break it all right well, that was the biggest challenge uh, uh, besides uh, swallowing a tablet uh, so uh, to uh, detect volumetric expansion more than a liquid you can use a gas okay so gases show greater volumetric expansion so if you have a, a thermometer filled with gas you typically have vacuum here and then as the temperature changes uh, due to volumetric expansion the position is changed and then what do you do you from here to the, this point there are two different temperature points you linearly calibrate and say if the liquid fills here is till this point you say that's the temperature and so on okay so you can uh, uh, between this length of the liquid column here and uh, uh, temperature you linearly mark the scale so that's all right for one of the liquid but how about if you go to another liquid what typically happens is uh, most of the liquid expansion uh, is not linear okay in the first liquid you marked it in as if there was a linear variation okay that was that linear uh, marking was by design but if you go to another liquid and uh, let's say which is more common for uh, some reason okay so you mercury mercury is a poison uh, it's an environmental pollutant so you don't want to be using mercury uh, you use some other spiritual solvent like uh, let's say ethyl alcohol or something like that right so um uh, so what happens is uh, most of the uh, properties vary in a non-linear manner. Okay, for example, here uh, it may expand less at uh, smaller temperature, but more rapidly at a, a greater temperature. Okay, so the typically uh, the default. Uh, when you go to condensed matter, that is solids and uh, liquids, they expand in a non-linear manner. Due to properties of the material, okay, chemical bonding and so on, so uh, that's a problem. Why is it a problem? So you will agree with the measurement at two endpoints, okay? That's by design, right? You you calibrate uh, the length, but you will not agree on uh, the temperature measurement with this liquid against the temperature measurement of some other liquid because of the the different non-linear expansion properties of these two uh, condensed matter systems, these two liquids. So what do you do? So we want to fix this and we want to have a linear variation. Okay, It has to be monotonous for sure, but it has to be linearly varying with temperature. So what, do you, what kind of a fluid do you want to be looking at? The fluid should be a gas, okay? So because gases have lesser interaction in general, the, uh, so it fixes, there's no material property of uh, which determines the nonlinear interaction. So uh, gases are a better, uh, more suitable uh, fluid. In fact, you can go one better than that. Ideally, the gases should be ideal gas, okay? So ideal gas don't exist, but things become ideal gas. Uh, as you go to lower pressure, lower pressure, right? And another is uh, higher temperature, but we are uh, interested in temperature variation, temperature variation measurement. So that's not something uh, you have a handle on. So we can have gases at low pressures. So how is this done? So you have what is called a constant volume gas thermometer. There are different designs. So this is one of the easier design, constant volume gas thermometer. So you uh, have a cylinder where, wherein you can measure uh, temperature and pressure, right? So, there's some way of doing that. So, uh, the, the main point is 
by reducing the temperature uh, by cooling it okay in some ways you can uh, decrease the pressure right so what do you see for different gases you use uh, gas a b c d all all of them have a linear variation see here what are we plotting here we are plotting uh, pressure uh, against a temperature scale right so what you see is that you have a linear variation and then you can this is in celsius you can convert it to the kelvin scale um which is it's an additive term um kelvin scale is the modern way of uh, quoting temperature it's more intuitive I will, i'll come to reason why it's more intuitive so what you see is that for all gases there's the linear variation in pressure okay so uh, at constant volume right but more interestingly all these gases irrespective of uh, the na chemical composition of the gas everything uh, seems to intersect uh, the x axis at this point okay so why have i marked uh, uh, mark this in uh, uh, dotted lines that's because gases tend to condense real gases right tend to condense ideal gases because they don't have any interaction they don't condense uh, and they're not uh, they're not uh, experimental possibility right so you have to use a real gas so they tend to condense so this is only extrapolated uh, data right so when you extrapolate they all intersect at the same point so this point when you convert it to kelvin scale is actually zero kelvin so let's see why this happens so all gases irrespective of the composition uh tend to behave as if they are an ideal gas so at, as you go to asymptotically as you reach zero kelvin uh, all gases pressure times volume uh, is a constant okay this is a empirical observation right then it is possible to reduce the pressure uh, as you keep reduce you you cool that system great to a greater extent you can decrease the pressure to a lesser and lesser value but you know that why, why is the the way we think about pressure from your high school is pressure in a container uh, that's because of the momentum transfer of the gas molecules impinging on the walls right so that is always a positive quantity you can have it uh, have the pressure to be very less but it cannot go below zero right it cannot be a negative number and also in the previous lectures uh, we quoted uh, we didn't prove but we quoted uh, a statement uh, based on equipartition theorem that temperature in kelvin is a measure of average kinetic energy right so kinetic energy is a positive quantity right so it can at the most be zero but it can never be a negative quantity so essentially both temperature and pressure has to be greater than zero all right uh so with what you know uh, from uh, equation of uh, state for ideal gas and so on the definition of thermodynamic temperature is something like this in the limit of pressure uh, a very small pressure this ratio pv divided by, by r is what we call as temperature okay so that's a, a real definition of temperature okay so you made a measurement uh, you also have interpreted uh, to know why this interpretation is correct you have to have a sense for uh, ideal gas uh, law and uh, what determines the why these ideal gases follow this law that is uh, what the subsequent lectures will be uh, in this particular issue all right so that's the definition of temperature and that's the way you think about uh, measuring temperature and that's the way you think about uh, scales okay there are if you have determined uh, a different scale and in if you were in 1700s and so on you can uh, you say oh this scale is better you not only you say uh, you say the scale is better you can have a scale named after yourself right so that you can you don't have that choice now right so all there are many scales uh, which differ uh, in practical implementation of the scale and all these things are uh, trivial conversions okay so there's nothing conceptual so you, i'm just going to give it as a reading assignment so uh, as a close uh, closing statement 
what is important to note. Our measurement and definition of temperature depends upon the following facts, right? You have, let's say, an ideal gas, P times V is a monotonous function of temperature, right? When you multiply the pressure and volume of that gas, it increases uh, monotonously, even for a real gas. Okay, so uh, one of the simplest equation you can determine for a real gas is pressure times volume minus a constant. What is that? For an ideal gas, the point particle, and they don't have so-called excluded volume interaction. We uh, discussed this in the last discussion. Are so even for a real gas, a very simple equation of state. Okay, can be P times V minus P. Right. That should also be a monotonous uh, function of temperature. So what is important? This function which we are talking about, uh, we are going to be discussing more, has to, cannot have a maxima uh, or a minima or a stationary point, right? These are excluded. So if this condition is valid, okay, this times this is a monotonous function of uh, temperature, your temperature is well-defined, it can be measured and so on, right? So here we have emphasized on certain properties of materials, ideal gases or real gas. You will see later that you can define temperature without referring to the properties of material length, volumetric expansion or properties of gases. It is possible to define temperatures using second law of thermodynamics. As I often mentioned, the second law of thermodynamics is the climax of this class. So this is an advertisement for that. And we'll see this in a few lectures from now. With this, I will close this lecture.